Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 28 where I take your emails that you sent to me at msargent23 at comcast.net so that's msargent23 at comcast.net and if I don't read it on Strange World on Tuesday nights on Truth Frequency Radio I will try to get to it here. I get a lot of emails so you just have to bear with me sometimes. It takes a while to get back to you. Let's get to it, shall we? First email is from Bobby. He says, hey, Mark, check this out. Yes, you can read this on the show. I put it at the top. See, see, he did a good job there. Hello, good sir. My name is Bobby from Leidner, British Columbia. I started just like the rest. In fact, I intended to, de to debunk you. One year later, I'm a flat earther. Okay, have you heard about Devon Island up north in Canada? Google. Devon, that's D-E-V-O-N, Island, NASA. It's very flat, wink, wink, large island, the largest uninhabited island in the world. It also has trucks labeled NASA on it and Mars rovers for testing, question mark, or faking the Mars pics. Tint the pictures of the island red and it looks like the Mars pics. Check it out. I sent one pic here to show you. So yeah, have some fun with that, guys. Go ahead and look up Devon, D-E-V-O-N, Island in Canada. And could that be one of the places where they do NASA simulations? That's awesome. This next one's called Glasgow Paisley Meet. There's a meetup April 8th at the last post in Paisley at 2 o'clock their time. And that's from Rob. Staying ahead of the curve. Now, if anyone's going to do a meetup, by all means, send me an email and I will promote it here if I can. This one's called GPS. Mark, I have followed your video teachings, teachings for quite a while and I wanted to share some information I have known about GPS. If this is redundant, then just regard, disregard this email. GPS is operated by the United States Air Force. Yes, they have a reported 24 satellites that triangulate positions, but I also understand that this method is used for earthbound tracking as well as aviation. I may be wrong, but I just want to share this. I was an Air Force officer for 12 years and flew with air crews as an aviation meteorologist. And you can check this out at gps.gov slash systems slash GPS. This website may have some additional info on GPS. That's from Steve Shardy, S-H-A-R-D-Y, out of Fort Worth, Texas. Awesome, man. That's great. This one's called the Van Allen Belt, if it opens. Mark, the question I have is how do we know there is such a thing as the Van Allen radiation belt? Exactly how do we know? What if Van Allen was told to say there is a radiation belt just to keep private space travelers away? Good point. Excellent point. How do we know if it really exists? You don't. All good questions. It is like being told not to go into the forest. You'll be eaten by the tree monsters. If you haven't been into the forest yet, you don't know if there are tree monsters that will kill and eat you. I live on an island of the Caribbean with wonderful views and other islands 40 to 50 miles away, proving that all water always finds level and the earth is therefore flat. Thank you, Mark. Peter Alter. That's great. I don't know where in the Caribbean he is, but yeah, good question. Unless you can test it for yourself, you've got to put quite a bit of faith into whatever we're talking about. And when it comes to science, again, look at the core of the earth. That's a perfect example. They will show you diagrams, nicely spaced rings going all the way down to the center of the earth, which is supposedly 4,000 miles underneath your feet. And yet, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? Was it 1,000 miles? Was it 100 miles? Was it 10 miles? No. None of these things. It was eight miles. Deepest hole ever drilled. So if they can only drill down eight miles, what exactly are they drawing for you in all the science books? There you go. This one's called Best of the Day. Hey, Mark, thought you would like this explanation. I have no idea where it originated, but it was sent in a round robin from a glober in America. It actually explains a lot and gives us insight to present day events. Railroad tracks. The United States standard railroad gauge distance between the rails is four feet, eight and a half inches. That is an exceedingly odd number. But why was that gauge used? Because that's the way they built them in England and English expatriates designed the US railroads. Okay, makes sense. 
Why did the English build them like that? Because the first rail lines were built by the same people who built the pre-railroad tramways, and that's the gauge they used. Why did they use that gauge then? Because the people who built the tramways used the same jigs and tools that they had used for building wagons, which used that wheel spacing. That makes also makes sense. Why did the wagons have that particular odd wheel spacing? Well, if they tried to use any other spacing, the wagon wheels would break on some of the old long distance roads in England. That's, be that's because of the, sp uh, the spacing on the wheel ruts. So who built those old rutted roads? Imperial Rome built the first long distance roads in Europe, including England, for their legions. Those roads have been used ever since. And the ruts in the roads? Roman war chariots formed the initial ruts which everyone else had to match for fear of destroying their wagon wheels. Interesting, I did not know this. Since the chariots were made for Imperial Rome, they were all alike in the matter of wheel spacing. Therefore, the United States standard railroad gauge of four feet, eight and a half inches is derived from the original specifications for an Imperial Roman war chariot. Bureaucracies live forever. So the next time, you are handed a specification procedure process and wonder what horse's ass came up with this, you may be exactly right. Imperial Roman army chariots were made just wide enough to accommodate the rear ends of two war horses or two horses asses. Now, the twist of the story. When you see a space shuttle sitting on its launch pad, there are two big booster rockets attached to the sides of the main fuel tank. These are solid rocket boosters, or SRBs. The SRBs are made by Theocall at their factory in Utah. The engineers who designed the SRBs would have preferred to make them a bit fatter, but the SRBs had to be shipped by train from the factory to the launch site. The railroad line from the factory happens to run through a tunnel in the mountains, and the SRBs had to fit through that tunnel. The tunnel is slightly wider than the railroad track, and the railroad track, as you now know, is about as wide as two horses behind. So a major space shuttle design feature of what is arguably the world's most advanced transportation system was determined over 2,000 years ago by the width of a horse's ass. And you thought being a horse's ass wasn't important. I see what you did there. It's good. Long, but it's good. I think, I think it's really good. I mean, you could sum it up in probably a paragraph, but the, the I, I see where he was going. Awesome. Thank you for that. This next one is called Science Blog. It's from Lewis. The, oh yeah, it's just another, people send me the, the links. It's a link, but I'll, I'll mention what the link's called. It's called I Come in Peace, Engaging with Life on a Flat Earth from the brainbank.scienceblog.com from March 11th. So if you guys want to check out an interesting article, read that. This one's called Pocket Physics App. All right. What's that mean? View all images. One sec. This is images. Po Pocket Physics App. It mentions range of a projectile, time independent. Assuming a flat Earth with uniform gravity field and no air resistance, a projectile launched with specific initial conditions will have a predictable range. This range time independent is the total horizontal distance traveled by the projectile and can be described by the formula below, where vehicle's initial velocity and launch angle and blah, blah, blah. Okay, range of a projectile time dependent. Interesting, huh? You guys can look that up when you get a chance. Sorry about that. Normally I filter those out, but that's okay. Let's keep moving on. This one's called fact checks. Fact checks. Hello, Mark. I am a flat earther, but I have to correct you about two little details that you have been consistently repeated in your flat earth interviews. Namely, one about U.S. Navy missile instructor Sean McCrary. He did not say he was using two inch pencil beam radar. Did I actually say pencil beam? I think I said beam radar, but a two degree pencil beam radar. Okay, so it's not a two inch beam radar, but a two degree pencil beam radar. And you can look this up on YouTube. I think there is a difference in those terms, how they reflect to physical reality. Two, the, uh, you're right. And from now on, I will say a two degree pencil beam radar. Two, the flight tracking uses only land-based systems because GPS is a one way only. 
and they mentioned Flight Radar 24, how it works. The plane receives the GPS single and signal and its transponder transmits its location to receivers on land. That's why planes don't appear on flight tracking websites when they are out of reach of land-based receivers. They say that by 2017, there will be a low Earth orbit satellite-based system that would cover all the, the plane. <laughs> yeah, I know, I've heard this as well. I wonder how they would pull that one off. Yeah, I know, that's, that's how they explain it. I, I've, I've heard this explanation before. It doesn't, it's no excuse though, because if a plane goes down, and how can someone say that you absolutely had no idea where it was? Uh, he further says, I have been watching quite a lot of different YouTube presentations and hangout videos and listening to podcasts, etc. But one thing I have not heard anyone touching on, namely, if you have a pair of binoculars and you are focusing on a star, then you turn the focus knob further, like further away in the distance, and the star goes out of focus again. To me, this demonstrates that the stars are near. Flat regards, Seppo. Hmm. Interesting points. Good. Like it. This one's called the Stern Show. And by that, I'm sure they mean Howard Stern. And it says, Hey, Mark, it's Chris again. I called the Howard Stern Show regularly. I would love to call in about the $25,000 challenge. They could actually promote it on the show and have the debate live on air. Maybe they could do a three on three debate or something like that. Let me know if there's anything I could do to help. Great idea. Love the enthusiasm. They are never going to find three, it's three scientists. To get into one room, hell, you'd be lucky if you can get one. I've been trying for months to get any decent scientist to debate anybody from anywhere. And it is really, really tough because no scientist wants to put themselves out there. They don't want to be put on in, in the ring because you don't want to be the first scientist not to win definitively. And people have been talking about this for, for quite some time which is science, if flat earth was nothing, then science should have snuffed it out immediately. Meaning, if you, if you compare it to boxers in a ring, science should be able to knock it out in the first round. No question. And the longer they are in there in the fight, if they can't knock it out in the first and the second and the third, then people start questioning the champion, which is science. And they, nobody, nobody wants to be in the ring with, with this because there's questions they don't know how to defend against. And they're, they're scared. They're really, really worried. Do you want to be the first scientist who spent all that money and time on an education? You want to walk into the ring and go up against flat earth if you're not absolutely 100% positive you're going to win? You're going to take those chance? You're going to take that chance? Because if you, it doesn't matter. You don't have to lose. You don't even have to draw. If you don't win definitively and quickly, it's a loss. Plain and simple. It's, 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 it's weird odds how that plays out, but it's absolutely true. Uh, even if it was a draw, you're going to have a, a difficult time, which is why Joe Rogan, by the way, had, had such a field day with scientists because all things being equal, he had more conviction. And so he was all, he was perceived as the winner in all of his, all of his things, which eventually why he was compromised. So anyway, this one's called thanks. Just says thanks, literally. Hi, Mark. Yes, you can say my name and location. Fred Farrell from Longview, Washington. Hey, I've got an uncle down in Longview, Washington. Longview, Kelso. He actually coached high school football down there and was a history teacher, if I'm not mistaken. First off, thank you for waking me to the truth. I listened to YouTube videos while playing video games and didn't stop my autoplay before Under the Dome started. It was a few minutes into the video when it clicked for me. I actually put up my game and restarted the video so that I could watch the whole thing. <laughs> After that, I didn't have any doubt. Absorbed all the info I could for the next month. Once I saw the item on Mercury and Venus in the night sky, I darn near kicked myself for not seeing it sooner. Next subject, I'm no psychologist. <laughs> That's great. That's a great segue. I'm no psychologist. But I believe I know why we cry when we listen to Amber's song. Aw. I believe our subconscious is in mourning. Well, remember that the globe was our closest relative our entire lives. To suddenly lose that would be like losing a sibling or another family member. We feel great co coincidentally, coincidentally, coincidentally knowing the truth, but the deepest part of our minds has to try to get over it. It doesn't help that we are bombarded 24-7 with globe propaganda. If you want to have closure, try having a globe funeral at the conference. Ooh, that's good. A globe funeral at the conference. Like a ritual. 
Ooh, creepy. I don't know. Well, if there's enough press there, I'd do it. Although it would come off as kind of creepy. We'd be labeled a pseudo-religion pretty damn fast. My guess is Rob Skiva would be the best person to give the eulogy. <laughs> Maybe. After all, he is the most prominent religious person in the community. I wouldn't be surprised if there were no dry eyes in the house. Keep up the great work. I love your interviews. Flat Fred. All right, thanks, Flat Fred. That's fantastic. Moving on. Oh, by the way, I should I pr probably mention if people didn't figure out by now, and I'm, I'm telling you this several minutes into the emails, which if you haven't figured out the thumbnail, because I'm going to use a tricky one, it's the, the, um, the license plate says on the thumbnail, zero curve. And you're wondering why he had to use a, the number three. It's because he had to use a number in, in part of that. He couldn't just say zero K-U-R-V or K-E-R-V. He had to say, put the number V. So in case you were looking at it going, I don't get it. I don't know what it means. It says zero curve. And he actually put a little sticker. Uh, he put a space, he deliberately put a space between zero and curve and then put a little sticker between the two. Anyway, look at the, look at the thumbnail again. You'll totally get it. This one's called You and Pizza. And starts out, hi, Mark, I am Croatia, so please excuse my grammar, and I'm sorry I can't give you my real name at this moment. Why not? All right. I came across the Flat Earth in July of last year, and I got totally hooked on. I am thinking about FE all the time, and it seriously affects my job. I don't know what you do, but I'm sorry it affects your job. Anyway, I'm sending you four photos. I often hear that you use a pizza as an example for noobs, so here you go. The second photo is, well, I guess I'm tired listening to the same argument from my non-Flat Earth buddies that every picture is different because of different cameras. The last two photos are from my first 22-minute video. Some new stuff are in it, but unfortunately, I cannot publish it due to a Jimi Hendrix copyright song. Well, do, yeah, take out the Jimi Hendrix copyright song, man. I cut it to only six minutes from that video, and I can send you the full version if you'd like to see. Moon Opinion. Nice segue, Croatia. I think the moon is something like a sponge, only instead of water absorption, the moon absorbs the sun's rays. Hmm, maybe. The sun is somehow charging the moon, so when the sun goes away, the moon lights up only the side where the sun was and turns it into a cold white light. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's not my favorite explanation, but we'll take it. I think that's why we see moon phases. I have some other ideas about the moon, and I'll email to Rob Skiba because he's more uh, of a visual type like I am. This is going to sound really arrogant, but there's no other way to put it, so I'll just say it. Last year, I found something that will really hurt NASA. I don't know if that's arrogant. Possibly, it may be sensational. Possibly even buried the Apollo moon landings for good. Video will probably be like two hours. I hope to finish it soon, and then I'm sending it to you because I don't want such a burden on my back, and I think you're the best guy for something like that. That's what I hear in my heart from the beginning. I honestly think that this thing just fell from the sky because there's no way I have such a beautiful mind. So I'm giving full credit to Jesus Christ for this revelation, and in your hands the truth will quickly spread out. I have so many ideas for all kinds of vids, but not enough time because of my job. Sometimes I have two jobs. Anyway, I'm all about getting the truth out, and there's nothing going to stop me. And I think you're right. This year will be a very exciting year. Mark, I love your work, and God bless. In the name of Jesus Christ, brother, I hope to hear from you soon. Truth Seeker 7, which means i got to save that email because i got to write them back and say, hey, if you got a two-hour video that you haven't put up yet, I would love to see it. This one's called Rhode Island. It's flat license plate, and yeah, Rhode Island. It's, it's the ocean state. That's kind of cool. Hello, thanks for all you do regarding flat earth, getting the word out. My friend opened my eyes to the idea. And while a while back and wouldn't stop talking about it. Now I see more clearly staying unplugged in staying plugged in to keep the idea fresh and continue to learn more. He forwarded your license plate YouTube video to me and suggested I get it where we are in Rhode Island. I just reserved it due to arrive in eight to 10 weeks. I'll forward the actual plate picture once it's on the car. Thanks again, Leah. And what Leah did there was perfect. If you're going to do a flat earth license plate, send me the screenshot. If the Department of Licensing throws something up on your screen, and I will use that screenshot until you get your actual plate, then send me the plate, and then I'll replace the two because it's super, super easy. And right now, I think we've got at least half the country, and we're working on five of the provinces in Canada. And there's a guy down in Australia was doing it. I didn't know Australia could do vanity plates, but it doesn't really surprise me. So everyone that's doing that stuff, cool. Love to love to do it. And 
uh, just you know, be honest. So if you're going to get the plate, I know you can do a department of licensing to get a screenshot and then cancel your plate. Don't do that. Get your screenshot and, and send it to me, but actually go through with it and get, get the freaking plate. You're going to be part of something cool. Ask anybody. Ask Shaquille O'Neal, who just came out this week. So thank you, Leah, for that. It's awesome. Uh, this one's called Career Day. Career Day. Good evening, Mark. My name is Larry. I am a detective in South Texas near the city of Harlingen. I've actually been to Harlingen, Texas. I'll be damned. I actually went there on business years ago. Harlingen, Texas. It's, it's a name that sticks with you. I've been following you for approximately a year now and cannot express my sincere gratitude for your work and appreciation for your truly brilliant mind. About two weeks prior to this email, I was assigned to a local elementary school along with another detective for career day in which we talked to young children about our jobs and the process in becoming a police officer. Upon our arrival, I noticed a gentleman sitting to the right of our designated table, which had a black tablecloth bearing the logo of, logo of ULA. The table caught my attention due to various space and rocket paraphernalia, and the first thought to mind was the children being exposed to space travel and they having no reason to ever question space exploration. Furthermore, the gentleman presenting the information to the children and seeing their faces in awe as the morning continued and several hundred children later, there was a break in between talking to the students. I approached the gentleman still seated at the ULA table and asked him, are you guys affiliated with SpaceX? The gentleman's reply was that ULA, United Launch Alliance, was the direct competitor to SpaceX, and they are not affiliated. Have, having since listened to your program regarding SpaceX sending two people to orbit the moon, I asked him, have you heard about SpaceX sending people into orbit around the moon? The gentleman's reply was, yeah, I have, and NASA is pretty pissed, I heard. My reply to the gentleman was, well, you know why NASA is upset, right? The gentleman asked me, why? To which I replied with a smile, because the earth is flat and no one is going anywhere. The gentleman paused and stared at me with the utmost dumbfounded look while maintaining a mild smile. With no response, I told him, you didn't really think the earth was a ball, did you? At this point, I knew he was uncomfortable with what had been said. To lighten the discussion, I asked him what his position was within the company to which he gave me a detailed account of his accolades and accomplishments within the company. The gentleman goes on to say that he was a project engineer and, in addition to other areas of work, was responsible for designing the payload housing of the Atlas V rocket. As I continued to ask questions regarding his job, he stated the payload in which he works on is designed to house satellites specifically among other things. With this being said, I asked him if he had ever seen a satellite in person, to which the dumbfounded look reappeared, followed by a pause. The gentleman's reply was, I have never seen one in person, but I have seen, seen some in pictures. At this point, I believe he had never pondered the question as to how he builds a compartment for equipment he has never seen in person. I then asked him, where his office was stationed out of, to which he stated Harlingen Airport, which had been there for roughly 10 years. I then asked him if he had ever seen the rocket he works on launch, to which he said no. And again, it was almost a revelation to him in that he had never questioned anything he was doing. In conclusion, I simply stated, so you work in a compartment with on a compartment within a rocket for a satellite you have never seen, nor has the product in its entirety been launched before your eyes. I told the gentleman to have a good day and we parted ways. To me, Mark, this was a huge deal. I just wanted to share this with you for whatever it's worth. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, Mark, for all you have done in your work. And I ask you continue to do what you've been doing. You have changed my life forever and I owe you more than you will ever know. Sincerely, Larry Medina. It's great. It's awesome. Good story. Like it. This one's called Zen Garcia Interview. Hi, Mark. I missed Zen's show on Saturday, but listened to it very early this morning and gave me lots of information to use with my sports nut brothers, sons, and nephews. Thanks for that. It was a great interview, except for one thing. I'll bet you heard this several times, especially from your Canadian girlfriend, but just in case, we have 10 provinces, 10 provinces and three territories here in Canada, not 15 provinces. 
provinces. Jeez, I'm not from here, so I don't say provinces. It's like, but okay. So however you made me check, our Obama light PM is doing such crazy things. He might have divided something existing or added something that really isn't ours uh, in his zeal to make a big name for himself, and I missed it. Apparently not. I also wondered if you were able to connect with Brooks Agnew about the pictures of the globe he spoke about. Evidently, he hasn't taken up the challenge yet. Keep up the great work, Karen. So I got to remember that because that's where I am right now. I'm in, I'm in British Columbia, which is a province. So there's 10 of those and three territories. It's weird. Why should you just call it? Why, why, why shouldn't there? Why isn't there just 13 provinces? That's that's my question. So, and I know one of the territories is Yukon. Don't know the other two. But that's okay. So we've got we've got we're pushing half of the provinces now. I don't we don't have any of the territories, and I think we want one of the territories because one of the license plate is shaped. It's not a rectangle. It's literally the license plate is shaped like a bear on its side. You know, a, a profile. Of the, of the full bear body, which is kind of cool. Really love to get that one. So, cool. So, 10 and 3, 10 and 3. Got to remember that. All right. This one's called Great Idea. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Hi, Mark. I was listening to you and Zenith. Zenith? Yesterday and have decided that this is the best idea to get family and friends to start looking into Flat Earth. Set a challenge for them to prove the globe and offer a reward. Would you just, you're right, just like Zen. Oh, Zenith. Yeah. Remember, spell checker is not infallible. So when you type in Zen and it doesn't know what to do with the word Zen, it tried to create Zenith. I am going to offer my adult relatives a thousand dollars and my nieces and nephews five hundred dollars to prove the globe and its movement without the help of fake NASA and theories to someone who has never seen a globe. Example, someone from a tribe in the Amazon forest, or should I word it a different way? Thanks and keep up the good work. Alma Ortega. No, it's perfect. Do do that. Whatever. Where, yeah, we should up. We should pony up money at this point because you're not going to lose. That's the best part. I mean, you know, make it somewhat realistic. Don't don't say, oh yeah, I'll give you fifty thousand dollars if you can prove the globe. And if you don't have fifty grand, don't do that. I mean, make it somewhat realistic. But I think it's a great idea. Kathy Dunson. Kathy Dunson. Zen Garcia's partner in crime. She is also, wonder if where we could post this to a show. I noticed some were adding their two cents to $100. Oh yeah, and so yeah, if anyone wants to know what the money tally is up to, look up Zen Garcia, his webpage, or Secrets Revealed, or you can just email Kathy Dunson and, and, and find out where it stands, and you can just email her directly at perilandra77 at gmail.com. That is P-E-R-E, landra 77 at gmail.com and say put the email title of what's the reward up to right now the globe reward and she'll give you a running tally i don't know what it is at the moment i'm hoping some scientist bites i don't know if money's going to do it maybe it's possible you never know this one's called flat earth question mark sorry am i if i am a bother but other than YouTube, I am alone in my beliefs. You said that the planets were like projection images. I can see this, but I'm stuck on their purpose. It seems that their alignment and simple ability to be viewed hints at some purpose. Has anyone you know of explored this side of things? I am new, but learning a lot and hope to attend Flat Earth 2017, the conference in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope to see you there. I might as well plug that right now. If you guys want to know more information on the conference, it's coming up in the fall, so you get plenty of time. <clears throat> go to fe2017.com and you'll get all the info. But but as far as what the, what the planets, they're just a wonderful form of decoration. Part of a giant clock system, a very elaborate clock system between the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets. It's it's wonderful. It's great. And it, it, it inspires people. It gives, look at all the things that people have, have created just from observing the stars and the moon and the sun, all the stories they've come up with, all the the legends, uh, the fantastic, fantastic stuff. It's inspirational more than anything. It's decoration. I believe that in the early versions, the stars weren't there and the moon wasn't there and the sun wasn't there. It was just light and darkness. Um, as this place got more elaborate, so did the sky. Of course, that's just my take on it, but I like it. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm 
I'm what? I'm 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 wonder if it will be possible to read this email on your show. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for everything. What you do eight years ago, I'm guessing this guy is not from the United States. I stumble across video. <laughs> I should read this in like an Eastern accent. I stumble across video about flat earth. And since then, everything has changed for me now. I'm watching videos about flat earth every day. And I cannot stop sometimes. I feel like little boy who was discover more and more. I remember first night after watching flat earth video. And that night, I cannot sleep. Because, all right, I'm going to stop right now. Because I was trying to figure out in my head why the North Star is fixed and does not move. And for me, spinning the ball with tilt have no sense. And that situation give me more courage. I so want to slip into that accent again. Courage to do more investigation about Flat Earth because of guys like you and others help me to understand more. But before I watched the videos about Flat Earth, I was watching Moon Landing Hoax. And for me, it was very easy to see the NASA lie. I am filmmaker and cinematographer from UK. <laughs> going to surprise me. So I have an idea about light and shadows at my work. I was trying to speak to people about those subjects, but people acting like zombies. So I have no one to speak to about those stuff. So I have a question. I would like to meet someone in my area who are interested in the same subject. I'm living in Manchester, UK, and my email is, you know what, let's give out the email. He's gone this far. It is M-A-R-I-U-S-Z-S photography at gmail.com. So Marius Z-S photography at gmail.com. If someone wants to meet and have a chat about it, that will be great. Thank you, Mark, again. P.S. <laughs> there is my website. It is www.mariuszc... Oh, zcislowicz.com. Where are you from originally, man? It is Eastern, to be sure. If you could share it, that would be so wonderful. All right, I'm going to have to write him back and say, I read this on air and tried to imitate you. <laughs> I'm sorry if I butchered it. Okay, this one's called Google X Prize. Hey, Mark, in the last Zen Garcia interview, you forgot to mention that there is also an Israeli team that works on getting on the Lunar X Prize. Look up Space IL. Also look up Buzz Aldrin's visit to their offices last year. Regards, John. You know what? You're right. So it's a Japanese team, an Indian team, an Israeli team, a European team, and an American team. I thought there were two American teams, but it sounds like there's only one. So I remember that. Israel team. And ten provinces and three territories. Okay. This one's called, may I have a copy of your survival guide? Hey, Mark, thanks for the great content and research. I was listening to your podcast, and I, too, would like a copy of your survival guide. Thanks in advance, Michael Dernal. You bet. And I think I sent it to him. Hopefully, I sent it to him. If, if, if he's hearing this and I haven't sent it to you, let me know. It's a free survival guide. It's something I came up with, uh, came, up, came up after Katrina. Shows you how to survive a long-term power outage. It's not designed for anything specific like zombies or meteors or civil unrest or martial law or something like that. So you can just email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. You don't even have to say hi or anything. Just say, I want survival guide in the title. And leave the rest blank and I'll shoot it off to you. It's only two megs. The only thing I suggest is that you print it out if you get a chance because if the power goes out, you're going to feel like a dork. Uh, no, that's an email from Chip. He sent me some more music. So if you guys were kind of curious about some of the music that I use in the Strange World, it is done by Chip Baker. And he does the opening track with the background sound bites from the Warriors in the United States movie from the 70s. And at the top of the hour, he also does the sound bites in the sound song for uh, it, the sound bites were from Dr. Strangelove which was one of Stanley Kubrick's masterpieces. Fantastic movie that he did on a shoestring budget. This one's called Typo. No, it's not. No, this one's called something else. Hi, Mark. 
I've been listening to Strange World episode 8, wherein you interview Crow777. <coughs> wow, it seems like such a long time ago. It was. It was 90 episodes ago that I interviewed Crow777, back when he didn't believe in Flat Earth at all. I went to his YouTube channel and tooled around a bit and watched the Lunar Wave videos in particular. In your opinion, what would be needed equipment-wise, etc., to gain definitive positive proof that the moon is a hologram or some other type of digital or other type of construct? I don't know. I don't know yet. I couldn't. I don't think I could answer that in, in two seconds over this thing. I, I don't know. If somebody has a, a good idea of how you would prove that the moon is a hologram or not, let me know. He goes on to say, high definition cameras seem to be able to provide hints and clues, but that's still not proof. At the end of the day, it seems to me that just knowing that all is not as it appears does one very little good. Unless we are able to come to definitive conclusions, we may as well just go on about our hamster lives if we didn't know any better. And for all intents and purposes, there is no difference between those who know and those who do not know at this point. It's like an orgy of mental masturbation. Forgive the term. It's hard to forgive that one. Without actually doing something. Don't you agree? So as with the UFO community's disclosure project, there has to be something we can do to make, begin making real definitive verifications on the things we suspect. Hmm. Okay. Working on it. Working on it, man. This thing's moving forward. We'll get there. This one's called, I just don't get it. It's from James, I believe. Hey Mark, I am going through an article of SpaceX right now regarding the two private citizens going around the moon and back. I can't help but scream out in my head, who is not understanding that according to mainstream science that the earth is speeding through space at 66,000 miles an hour? To me, this is the key factor that allowed me to confirm to myself that space is not what they tell us. Dude, I'm looking forward to the world after the Flat Earth 2017 conference. Also, I was thinking about the license plate, FE model. Ooh, that's good. Anyways, take care. Look forward to each show, James Campbell. FE model, that's good. I like that. No curve. Uh, something with plane in it, P-L-A-N-E. There's all sorts of cool things you can do with seven or eight letters. But if you're going to start coming up with different versions of it, use seven letters and see what you can see what you can do. Use Scrabble Helper if it, if it um, makes it easier. This one's called Space Cadets. Space Cadets. Hey, Mark, thanks for the info. I sent a T-shirt idea w once in a while. I send a T-shirt idea once in a while. Consider this. Yes, I am a flat earther. Please don't allow that to disturb your investigations. That's the t-shirt. Cheers, Jim. Awesome. And the Space Kids thing, it was, a, it was an email string. We were bouncing back and forth where if you want to look at something interesting, look up the British television show. Interesting that they didn't do an American version of it because we steal stuff from British TV all the time. It, in fact, British television seems to be a test bed for American television in a lot of cases. Look up a television show called Space Cadets where they punked people through a fake astronaut training program and then put them in a flight simulator and convinced them that they were going up into space. Great. It worked, it worked really well. They all bought it. This one's called Flat Earth Horizon something. Right. Horizontal Curvature. Good afternoon, Mark. I am currently going through your playlist on YouTube. Lots of interesting points. I've been digging into Flat Earth for a while now and unfortunately do not have the time to do more than a cursory study. I do do try now and then to observe and do a few tests and experiments at home. I just wanted to share something I experienced a few weeks ago. I have had a hang up with the Earth's curvature and wasn't satisfied with the horizon is flat, as many others can see a curvature as I look straight ahead. On a recent R&R moment on the Pacific coast of Nicaragua, the light bulb came on. The apparent curvature is a horizontal illusion. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I took the time to prepare a short report of my observations and a few tests I did at home. I don't have the skills or the time right now to do any 3D rendering or animation or videos right now. I would value your feedback peer review. If you're interested in reviewing the report, let me know. I now know that there is no curvature and I think I can explain why we sometimes perceive curvature on the horizon. Hint, looking straight ahead, there is a perceived curvature panning across the horizon. It is flat. Keep it up. I will likely register for the conference through FE online tickets. Should be an interesting event. 
Hurricane M. That's a signature. Yeah, again, I, I've said this on, on different things. We are taught since we are young to believe in the curvature. We want to see the curvature. So your mind will play subliminal tricks on you. You will go, I've, I've still, to this day, have people email me and say, I can see the curvature from the beach. No, you can't. Can't see it from a plane, can't see it from a weather balloon. You cannot see it from the beach. But people keep saying that, people keep saying that because they want to. Pilots, on the other hand, never see curvature. They're more mechanically oriented. And so I've never to this day run into a pilot says, no, I can see the curvature. They run into this paradox where a pilot will look out through their cockpit and they always see flat because remember they're above the weather when, once they get to a certain point, they always see flat at every elevation, but they are taught that it's a curve. So they have to dismiss what they see. And it's like, okay, well, we know it's, we know it's not a curve or we know it's not flat because science tells us it's a curve. So we just have to go with the curve. And then of course they land, they, they go from point A to point B and nobody dies. So it's like, okay, you know what? We'll just skip this for basically our entire lives. This one's called, please read. I thought this subject was Looney Tune stuff till I listened about two years ago to a talk show. All right. I doubt you will read this, well, maybe, but I hope you'll respond to me. I clearly, from what I'm gonna tell you, I have no writer's skills. I don't know, you're better, better than that guy I read from the UK a little bit ago. But I also don't consider myself stupid. But the way I write this may seem otherwise. Anyway, a couple of years ago, I was driving home on a three-hour drive from where I work. I'm a union pipe fitter, which you being an engineer, you know, I'm not an engineer. I interviewed engineers, but I'm not an engineer. You know, obviously what I do. Well, I work for a specialty company and I'm highly paid for my job not to sound like an egomaniac asshole. <laughs> I'm liking this letter already. I just want you to know, after I listened to this show, I heard, which I just did for entertainment on my drive, I became very interested and it kind of has taken over my interest in life. I literally think I've ever seen almost every documentary on Flat Earth. To make a long story short, I think I have thought of a way to prove if there is a curve. And I also believe if this is done, it will prove a curve or no curve. I think it will prove no curve in my opinion, but I think it's the simplest way to prove it. <laughs> it's being redundant. He's repeating himself. He's saying the same things over and over. Okay, what I've thought of, I haven't seen any videos, and trust me, I've watched God knows how many hours of Flat Earth videos in two years. And I got that point. It would be way easier to describe if I could talk instead of write, but I have just two small drawings, which are very basic, but you get the point just by seeing. If you have two poles, he means uh, like, big things would length could be a thousand feet pointed straight up which would make the poles level but then if you stand those poles even one mile apart further would be better than leveled them out with cables so they stand directly level then had two lasers determining distance on each pole or tower so four total lasers I actually have heard a version of this test before get a reading from each middle way up lasers so you have a length between the two okay now take a measurement with the two lasers on the top of both poles or towers if the top measurement is not exactly the same as the bottom and the pole towers are level then there is a curve but if the measurements come out totally square and identical and the poles are level then that means there is no curve i hope you contact me back i'm very interested in the subject it's actually taking over my life as i think about it every day awesome that's from tyler stovall I think. Pretty sure it's his name. Yeah, no, I, I've heard versions of this test. It's good. Like it. Uh, this one's called. What's this one called? Wish Travel, the minibus company. Mark, can I just ask if you support the idea that we live in an enclosed dome? This would be the barrier between us and space that allows space to be a vacuum and our habitat to be something else. That bit I agree with. But if we do live under a dome, why don't we have an equal air pressure? The air we live in would equalize with itself and the constant throughout, wouldn't it? Tony. First part, yes, I do believe in a dome. Second part, would there would there be an equal air pressure all over the place? No, not necessarily. Not if it's big enough. In a small room, yes. Uh, uh, any sort of barometric chamber would have an equal air pressure. That's It's a small area. But if the area is vast enough, you it would tr be no different than water pressure. So if the air, you know, you put water in a... Um, 
uh, a container, a small container, like a like a dump truck. You know, the water is you're, you're not going to have any water pressure there. But if you go, you know, go to a, a really really deep lake and you get down to a certain level, you know, not even that far, 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, you're going to feel more and more pressure because the water is weighing down on itself. The exact opposite when it comes to air pressure, it goes it goes in the opposite direction. So I like where you're thinking, but you're not thinking big enough. It's good. But again, as long as people are asking questions. This one's called One Subject at a Time. Hey, Mark was thinking about a way to really start calling science and NASA out. There's more than enough proof out there that will show the Earth is not a spinning ball cruising through an ever-expanding universe at ridiculous speeds. But of course, they will come up with more ridiculous mathematical equations to explain this. But if we come together and start emailing, blogging, posting, the like NASA, NDT, and the other one that I'm, I definitely won't mention his name either, the one with the bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Yes, BME and pound them regarding the formula for the curvature of the earth, eight inches per mile squared, which is a joke, doesn't work, and just concentrate on that. They won't have any more options but to address it. I'm not talking about a few people sending emails, but everyone who believes that we are not living where they say we are. I think starting with this simple one will open up for other proofs that are out there. The obvious one for me will be water and always finding its level, but they will throw the gravity nonsense so we can't use it for now. If we can push science to look at the curvature formula and then of course they will realize that it is wrong, we'll let them make them vulnerable for more things to be addressed. Looking forward to the Flat Earth Convention, Luis. Awesome. Good letters. Good emails so far. Uh, we still got 10 minutes? Yeah, let's go 10 minutes. Sure, that's another three or four. Hi, Mark. You probably wonder who is this person sending me emails? So I don't know. I get a lot of emails. My name is Faranak, F A R A N A K. And I'm an architect. I too laughed when I heard of the flat earth for the first time. I tried to debunk it, but I failed. And as you have called it in the Pandora's box, it is very true. Once you know it, there is no way of going back. Thanks to you and Rob Skiba and Eric Dubay and some others who opened our eyes to the truth, I keep trying to spread the word. I never spend much time on making videos before, but I have started doing that to help us in this journey. I just wanted to share this video with you. It's about Professor August Picard, who used a balloon to reach the stratosphere in 1931. His testimony was published in Popular Science magazine in August of 1931. He confirmed the flat earth back then, but they never taught us in schools. Yep. I also want to share my experience in YouTube comments about flat earth. I've been able to convince all those skeptics who try to badmouth or mock us as well. They either convert or stop talking once they fail debunking the flat earth. My own YouTube channel has only three to four videos about Flat Earth, but I just started. Hope I could be some help in this path. Thanks for everything. Here is my channel. You know what? Let's click on the channel, see what he's got. It's called Yuppie Yup. Yup Yup. 0123. <laughs> Great name. Y U P Y U P 0123. That's his Flat Earth channel. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Moving on. What else we got? This one's called Flat Earth Show into the Parabnormal. All right. I'm going to be doing an, this is just a reminder. Well, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it live, but I'm doing a Dark 30 radio. It's not even a debate. We couldn't, we could not get any scientists to, to debate. It's, remember last year it was DITRH and me. It was supposed to be against Richard Hoagland and Mark D'Antonio. Richard Hoagland backed out because he's scared to get death of even talking to me because our, our two models are completely, uh, they, they don't, they completely conflict. His, his model does, cannot even begin to exist in a flat earth world because he believes in a secret space program that there's millions of people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands living on Mars. So Richard Hoagland backed out and so it ended up being Mark D'Antonio and a guy named Brian Dunning who actually was not bad to debate against. He was, he was very civil. Unfortunately, Brian Dunning's credibility is, shot to hell because when we had interviewed him he'd just gotten out of prison for fraud and he used to run a debunking site so kind of conflicting there now it's not fraud in the sense where he was he was running a, a fake debunking thing and he didn't believe what he was saying he had embezzled money from ebay 
He had worked for a subcontractor of eBay and stole quite a bit of money from them and didn't give it back. And so they put him in prison. He pled guilty in the whole nine yards. So I don't think I'm going to be talking to Brian Dunning anymore because, again, what credibility? He doesn't do me any good. The point is, is that a year later, Paranormal Radio is going to do a thing. In fact, they're going to do it the night of April 1st, and they're going to open up the phone lines. So the phone lines are going to be are going to be hostile, but it's going to be weird because they're going to think it's kind of a joke, right? Well, maybe, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But it's still going to be myself and DITRH. So just check with me as we get closer to April 1st, and I, it should be out there. Uh, I may do a promo for it. I may not, because we really don't want to have a lot of flat earthers call into it. We want, we want the hostile calls. No offense to, to people that want to go in, but we don't need pats on the back. We need people that are going to take swings at us. Okay. This next one is called Scale Proportional Flat earth map mark is there a proportional and to scale map of flat earth mike no not right now there isn't we we know there's something wrong with the scale of the flat earth especially when it goes to the southern hemisphere northern hemisphere i think is pretty close southern hemisphere we have there's something something going on with with scale and we can tell this with some of the flights and there have been several people that have been working on it now for months and months we we still can't nail uh, all of it down but we're, we're still working on it. Thank you for checking in. Again, if you want the latest stuff on Flat Earth, just go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth, set the filter to upload date, and it'll give you the latest and greatest. Or just set the filter to one year or one month or however long you've been out of it, and we'll, you'll, you'll get caught up pretty quick. Can I do two more? I think I can. This one's called Career Day. Oh, no, I already did that one. That was the detective. He had sent that to me twice. Glad I caught that. This one's called Official Science Writer. Refers to the dome twice in 2013. Hi, Mark. Apologies if you have already seen this. Please have a look. And the link is to earthsky.org space when you can see a daytime moon. The author of this short article refers to the dome twice. She says on the sky's dome two times when referring to the sun's reflection and the moon. It is written by a scientist named Deborah Bird. Interesting surname. Here is her bio in the article. Who hosted a science radio series in 1991 and the Earth Sky Org in 1994. Today, she serves as editor-in-chief of this website. She has won a galaxy of awards from the broadcasting and science communities, including having an asteroid named 3505 Bird in her honor, a science communicator and educator since 1976. Thanks for all you do, soldier on, soldier on. And I bet you didn't even do that deliberately because my last name is Sergeant. Regards, Little Bird. I think her name's actually Kelly. All right, can we do one more? Let's do a good one. Let's see if I can find a find a decent one here. Uh, maybe two more. Okay, this one's called I Bet a Number 16 Seed Beats a Number 1 Seed in the NCAA. Don't be surprised if St. Mary's, especially, or one of the other 16 seeds wins for the first time over a number 1 seed in this year's NCAA tournament. With all the firsts happening this year, the Patriots coming back from such a huge deficit in the Super Bowl and the first ever Super Bowl going to overtime, with the gaffe at the Oscars and the Flat Earth finally becoming mainstream, I think this could be the year the number 16 seed finally wins. Not sure how significant this is in the grand scale of things, but would be interested if this is the year Shannon Raynor. Yeah, a weird year. Super weird year so far. And should we? No, we're not going to end it on that. The. The fact that Shaquille O'Neal came out just two days ago and said that he was into flat earth. Shaquille O'Neal, living legend, one of the greatest basketball players and sports figures of all time. So, let's see if we can do anything else. Sure, this guy already. Yep, the interview. Yep, yep, yep. Got that. Can I do one more? Flat earth movie? Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, a plot for a Flat Earth movie? Nah, I don't want to get into that yet. This one's called Jay and Neil. Let's end, let's end on something fun. Do we have anything? 
This one's called Jay and Neil. I recently saw an episode of Jay Leno's Garage with NDT taking a test run on the salt flats. Ironic, isn't it? And I made my first meme. <laughs> Bob. Oh, shoot. I should look at this real fast. Did he, get, did he send me a meme? Yeah, salt flats are measurably flat, Neil. Not a bl <laughs> plate. <laughs> That's good. That's what we're going to end on. Which is, in fact, you know, maybe I'll, I'll throw that slide in at the very end of this thing. Which is, uh, yeah, yeah, NDT on the salt flats. The salt flats, his, his excuse is, well, yeah, they're perfectly flat. That way you can do high-speed ground tests on them, but it's just a flat part on a sphere. It's like, really? The entire salt flats? How about the Salar del Uni, which is 100 miles by 100 miles? That's also perfectly flat. That's also just another flat spot in Kansas, among other places around, around the world. <laughs> Whatever. All right, guys, that's about it. Thank you, everyone, that has written in so far. Uh, then, and this will wrap up our email session. If you want to shoot me something, uh, if it's not too long and too involved, and don't include a whole bunch of math in it because it, it's tough to read equations over the air, you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.